All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shishiguru and Sri All glories to Shila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Meenu and Akshi, you can take it away. Thank you, Mataji. Can you see my screen, Mataji? Yes, you can both come. Hare Krishna, everyone, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity, Mataji. And uh, at this auspicious month of Kartik, I'm happy to be with all of you. And um, here uh, for the today's class, uh, we have uh, decided to share a little more on the universal form of uh, Lord Shri Krishna. And here if you can see, this is a wonderful topic indeed. And uh, I will be sharing or discussing a little more on Mother Yashoda seeing the universal form, Arjuna seeing the universal form. And uh, there are many more uh, souls as well who have seen like Duryodhana 
uh, they have also seen the uni universal form. But these are different experiences. Dif there were different responses to it. There were different contexts when the universal form uh, was being shown. The underlying principle shown uh, was our identification with the ego is so strong, is so deeply rooted. Uh, it it gets disturbed when um, the relationship uh, with the Bhagwan, uh, the relationship with Mother Yashoda has with uh, Krishna, the relationship which Arjuna has with uh, Krishna, uh, it, it gets disturbed. So, and we all have some identification in this materialistic verb, uh, mostly on the egoistic platform. So there is a flavor, there's a certain flavor between two people and when it gets impacted, when it gets disturbed, uh, that's where uh, we cannot take it or we have, uh, we have discomfort. So, uh, and in spiritual world, we call it rasa, rasa in the spiritual world, just exactly like materialistic world as well. So we also hear in chapter three that uh, the whole world is like a banyan tree and there is a, some resemblance in the spiritual world as well, but it's perverted. So in spiritual world, when a, there is a devotee who is fixed in a certain rasa, and if that rasa uh, gets challenged or there's a change in the rasa, the devotee cannot adjust. So in chapter 11, when Lord Krishna uh, shown his universal form to Arjuna. And he has already explained all his opulences in chapter 10. But when he asked a little more deeper, that I want to have a vision of your opulences, which you have described in chapter 10. And uh, there is a purpose. Arjuna uh, also shared that the pur my purpose to see you is not that I do not have faith in you or my faith will go higher if I see the universal form. Uh, and not that some say, oh, seeing is believing. So he says, no, this is not the reason. Uh, I do have full faith in you. And Srila Prabhupada also explained that Arjuna wanted to prove the point or set a criteria uh, for people like us to see those who do not believe, or he wanted to show that what Krishna says, he demonstrated as well. And uh, if somebody says that I am the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he has to show to accept the reincarnation of God or such cosmic opulences, all the planetary system originates from him. And uh, Sri Krishna is a source of all. And how he is a source? So basically, when Arjuna requests um, Bhagavan Sri Krishna to show his opulences in chapter two, uh, he surrendered into Lord Krishna and he accepts the similar feature, but the relationship, the rasa, was as a sakha, as a friend. And in chapter two, uh, Arjuna was treating him as a friend, but till chapter, up till chapter 10, uh, he understand that he's a Bhagawan, he's a God. So that is where uh, rasa gets changed. And the rasa of um, Sakha, uh, and uh, we, I have read in uh, chapter 11, and so how uh, it gets changed to wonder. So similar thing has happened with uh, Mother Yashoda also. So in uh, Nectar of Devotion, we have read about that there are uh, seven, uh, uh, 12 rasas and also there are primary and secondary rasas. And one of the rasas is wonder as well. So when um, Sri Krishna represent uh, much more and uh, when he in the universal form to Arjuna and when he devoured uh, there's a Kala Rupa, Sri Krishna tells Arjuna that everything is devout. Uh, Arjuna, you become Nimatta after seeing his universal form when Arjuna gets fearful, he gets bewildered. He tried to explain that Arjuna, why I'm showing you this universal form that I want you to become my instrument. I have planned everything and you will get the credit. So when Lord Krishna showed this all and in chapter 11, verse number 21 and 22, suddenly, Arjuna was bewildered, he was confused, he was unable to accept and his rasa changed into fear. And he, 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 he didn't want to see that form anymore. And he prayed and prayed and he, he did request Sri Krishna that I am bewildered. And uh, he, I always want to see you as my friend. And he was also feeling guilt that uh, I have joked around with you, I have slept with you, I've eaten with you. And I must have done so many offenses. And he started to feel guilty 
So the, in relationship also, we do encounter this when suddenly we realize the opulences or the of our friend or of our known person. We do get confused as well. So it, similar thing happened with Arjuna as well. So he he offered so many prayers to Krishna and he said, I want to see your Shama Sundar form. And after offering those prayer, prayers, he requested Krishna that I would prefer the sweet form of Bhagwan. And uh, that's where Krishna also mentioned, personally mentioned uh, to Arjuna that such a form is not easy to get. Only pure devotee uh, can see this. So this is the background of when Lord Krishna showed the form to Arjuna. And he wanted the original rasa of Sham Sundar. And after seeing the whole Ashwarya, the opulences, he still wanted to be in that uh, rasa of uh, Sakha with uh, Bhagavan Shri Krishna. And now similar incidents happen described in uh, Canto 10, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam in chapter 8, when Lord Krishna showed the universal form to Mother Yasoda. And this is twice mentioned in chapter 7 and chapter 8 as well in the mouth of uh, Mother Yashoda. So let's explore a little deeply here. Then why and how the new universal form was shown to Mother Yashoda. So one day, uh, baby, uh, baby Krishna was sitting uh, in a solitude and he was eating mud and eating dirt. And um, uh, he was, it was also explained by Achare, Mrida Bhakshan Leela. So he was enjoying that uh, Leela and all his gopas, uh, friends interrupted, uh, Krishna, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing here alone? Why are you eating this? And we will tell Mother Yashoda that uh, this is not a civilized uh, uh, a way to play in the mud. And uh, then Krishna gets upset and he said, why are you disturbing me? Uh, why are you bossing around? Why are you trying to dominate uh, at home? Uh, Balram is always keeping a watch on me and I don't get my independence. And um, now this is amazing. If we read the first canto of Srimad Bhag, there's a mentioning of the word called Swarat. And Krishna is independent. He doesn't want to follow anybody's instruction. Uh, and so he chastised them and they went to Balram, Balram Ji. So all the boys told Balramji and they came together and they decided that he's not listening to us. So let's lodge a complaint to Mother Yashoda. And Banral told, uh, also uh, mentioned that we tried to stop, stop him and he spoke very harshly to us. So um, obviously Balramji thought that as an elder brother, it's my duty and I should help him. So all of them went and they, they shared with Mother Yashoda that Krishna is eating earth. Now, Srila Prabhupada uh, writes in his translation that, uh, and also Acharya commented very beautifully on this uh, point in text 32, that uh, the concern of the Gopas and Balram uh, was actually genuine because they remember when Putna came and tried to kill uh, the kids with poison. And they also think that the, some poison have mixed up with sand and the mud. And they were actually uh, very concerned that uh, he might be uh, uh, having uh, an impact of this poison. And that's why they ran to Mother Yashoda as well. And uh, together with the Bharat. So, uh, and that's where they were trying to protect and consciously they were trying to protect in a humble way. Uh, Mother Yashoda do something about it. So in chapter 15, uh, verse 12, 13, also they, they also talk about that uh, the juice of uh, all the vegetation, they were they was expressing their thoughts. The friends were expressing their thoughts that the taste of all the vegetation being mentioned here, uh, the somrasa comes from earth, uh, Bhumi Devi. So they were also thinking about uh, whenever Krishna seals steel butter, he used to share with the boys. And uh, why this time Krishna is not sharing uh, much? So they were also angry that why, how Krishna can uh, having this uh, tasting rasa of uh, Mother Earth alone. So they were also upset about this uh, uh, aspect as well. So, and Balramji, Balramji was thinking uh, that I uh, manifest and um, uh, uh, this Krishna came to this earth to reduce the burden of earth. He was supposed to do uh, by killing demon and looks like he has forgotten and he's eating mud. So this was the inner meaning of the thought explained by Acharya that what Balramji was thinking, what Gopa was thinking. And uh, Balramji was also thinking that I am Anand Shesh, uh, holding planets, holding Mother Earth. And I am the proprietor of uh, Mother Earth. But whenever Krishna comes, he interferes in, uh, always in my property. As Vamandev also, he uh, through his steps. Now as a baby Krishna, he's doing the same thing, uh, showering his love and kissing the earth and taking the earth uh, as his property. 
So they all gang up and they decided that we have to uh, complain this to Mother Yashoda. And when they tell this to Mother Yashoda that Krishna is eating earth, she was full of anxiety and her eyes were so uh, fearful and she just uh, immediately ran to uh, chastise him. So she went to uh, uh, baby Krishna and her eyes uh, uh, was absolutely in fear also out of concern and also angry. So, and then when baby Krishna, when he, she sees that Mother Yashoda is running also, so her, his eyes was also in fear. So, so basically by the effect of Maya, Krishna, Bhagwan Shri Krishna, he forgets that he is a Bhagwan. And when he saw the stick in the hand of Mother Yashoda, he was also in immense fear. And uh, then Mother Yashoda goes and said, uh, her son was also fearful that he has eaten the mud. So we must have read uh, the past time how Lord Krishna is not too much pleased with the bhakti. He's pleased with the bhakti, which is as they are covered with the yoga maya, specifically for Vrijavasi. Their, their love is so pure, is so thick that even the Krishna Aishwaryas never affect him. So they always treat him as a son. They always treat him as a friend. So there's a thick covering of prema. It gets absorbed uh, by uh, Krishna love as a child, as a friend, as a lover. And that's why Vrindavan is the ocean of love and it is so much glorified. So coming back, so when this uh, uh, mixed emotion of fear and anger and Mother Yashoda went to chastise him and um, Jiva Goswami says in Srimad Bhagavatam that my heart is so hard so hard that it doesn't melt, it doesn't cry when I hear about baby Krishna, hoping that it will impact. It also doesn't impact when I hear about Mother Yashoda. But when I hear about this, this scene of Mother Yashoda chastising baby Krishna and both are having fear and both are having, uh, 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 Mother Yashoda is having anger, my heart actually cries. So in text four, when she asks, then in out of anger, why are you so restless? Why are you eating mud? Um, and uh, now exactly as a conditioned soul, uh, we have to remind ourselves that who actually Krishna is, right? So um, uh, during a, one of the lecture, one lady was asking that why Krishna also do so much boasting about himself? I'm this, I'm that. Is Krishna so egoistic? And uh, so the answer is, Somebody has shown her the page of Bhagavad Gita, how Krishna was sitting like a servant for Arjuna. He's so menial, he's so humble. So he's introducing his power to us so that we can take shelter. And he explains the Bhagavad Gita page after. So, so, so that's how Bhagavan Shri Krishna is. So he forgets when he sees the pure love of the devotee. So back again, Krishna was so fearful that he cannot even speak and uh, the reason why he's eating mud. So what he wanted to do, he wanted to finish all the dirt in his mouth uh, and uh, so that he can actually plan that, uh, what should I do? So the only thing happened is his eyes was rolling here and there and he didn't know what to do. So, so in verse number 34, uh, the conversation happens between the eyes. They are not talking, just eyes are communicating that why have you eaten this dirt? So Krishna says, no, 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 I have not eaten. Who told you, who saw me? Uh, then uh, why have you so restless eating this dirt in a solitary place? So he says, uh, who complained uh, about you? So she says, uh, gopis. Oh, gopis, their business is to complain about me, Mother Shoda. Uh, I said, not only your friends, your brother, he has complained about you as well. The Kumaras, Kumaras means they're so young, they're less than five years, and uh, they will speak truth out of their innocence. And even Balram, Balram cannot lie. Now, do you think Balram is also lying? Now Sri Krishna get into the Sankat. He has uh, immense respect for his brother. And the only option he thought is to change the topic. So, uh, and Lord Krishna also wanted to, uh, 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 was thinking, how should I change the topic? So he says, oh, but Mata Hishoda, Balaram, Balaram was supposed to protect me. He just doesn't protect me. And the I, then he's so supposed to be my eye lead, but looks like I need another eye lead uh, because I lost faith in him. And uh, Mother Yashoda was laughing and he said, oh, you lost faith? Yes, Mother Yashoda, you doesn't know. He mocks around me. He always has embarrassing question to me. And I'll tell you one day what happened. He asked me, uh, okay, Krishna, do you know, uh, I am so fair. Mother Yashoda is so fair. Anand Bhagwan, uh, Baba is so fair. Why are you so black? I will tell you why are you so black. You know why? 
uh, when you are young, someone sold you in the market and left you. And then Baba bought you from there and picked you. He felt pity on you. And you know, I'm your elder brother. I know everything. And you know, Mother Yashoda, that is how he embarrassed me. And what you do, uh, you should get me married and make sure you get me married to a very, very beautiful wife. And she must be fair so that nobody can make fun of me. So mother said, oh, you want to get married, is it? Have you searched for a girl? Uh, so he said, uh, Krishna Bhagwan, oh, actually, you know, marriage must, uh, marriage means the relationship between two families. And I'm thinking Nan Baba is very close to Vrishabhanu Maharaj and you are close, so close to Kirti Dasi. So we have such a great uh, family bonding. So I should get married to uh, their daughter. And this is how Krishna was trying to divert Mother Yashoda's mind. And, but Mother Shuddha is aware that this Krishna is trying to change the topic. So she asked again, we will talk about your marriage later. Now you tell me, why have you eaten this mud? So by the time uh, Krishna has already cleaned up his mouth and is ready to talk. So he, and he said, Krishna, is it you love the dirt? Or I did not give you anything to eat. Or you're so hungry, today you are eating dirt. Shri Krishna couldn't find answer. He was still very fearful and he was not able to think and he was searching for a reason. So his eyes were dancing here and there and overwhelming with Mother Yashoda love. He completely forgot about his position as a Bhagavana and as such a prem was there. In Nectar of Devotion, there is a mentioning of the six characteristics of uh, part of it. The last is um, uh, that devotee completely purchases Krishna. Pure bhakti is so special. Therefore, Krishna doesn't give bhakti so easily as he forgets uh, that he's a bhagwana and he becomes the son, he becomes a surrogate a servant and forgets his uh, opulences. And also, Achara explains that Lord, Lord Krishna was looking right and left and right and uh, thinking that who is that person who started this complaint business? And then he gives another beautiful uh, description about how Krishna's eyes were rolling. So in uh, verse 35, Krishna uh, says that, my dear mother, I have not eaten a dirt, Amba. And he specifically mentioned this word Amba, which means that he wanted to, he's invoking special emotions, referring to a lady. Amba means a lady who kept the child for nine months. And Mom, Amba, we have such a beautiful, special relationship. You are trusting Gopas and questioning me. You should be trusting me. All of them are liars. Now, when Krishna says that all, he didn't want it to specifically uh, uh, say that to Balaram because he has a respect for uh, Balaramji. So by saying this, uh, Shri Krishna is lying. Actually, he's not. Uh, that the entire cosmic creation lies in Krishna. So when everything is inside him, uh, how can he eat that? And moreover, there is something called as a relative truth. And some call something as absolute truth. So here more focus was given on the absolute truth where whatever enhances the absolute truth is, is the truth. So whenever, whatever change transform between them is the absolute truth. So now coming back, the Lord Krishna says, they all are lying. They all ate mud every day to hide their mistake. And they're telling you about me. Then Acharya says that, uh, Sri Krishna says that it's, it's actually true. All the vegetables na are naturally Eat a day, they, they eat it daily. So, and in a way, he was not lying. So he says that. And then he just cleans up his mouth. And this time he says that, uh, Mother Yashoda, if you have no faith, come, uh, open my mouth. And Krishna was thinking that Mother Yashoda, uh, he's challenging Mother Yashoda and she would not ask that, ha, yeah, you open uh, your mouth. But Mother Yashoda did that. He, and he was thinking she will not. And he was not ready for it. And suddenly, Sri Krishna has to open his mouth and he was not ready. And to exhibit his uh, pastime as human child, he did that. So although the Supreme Personality did not want to disturb mother's parental affection, his opulences uh, were automatically manifested, just manifest at the proper time, automatically. And uh, that's where when uh, Mother Rishwa chastised him, he opens his mouth and he has forgotten that he's a Lord, but his energies did not forget they become activated immediately. And our supreme creation, they wanted to show that, uh, that Mother Yashoda and everyone, that uh, the, all the creations reside uh, in the Supreme Lord. The opulences wanted to show that they, they, they felt, actually they felt uh, bad. They felt uh, that how can uh, she, she challenge uh, Shri Krishna? 
and that is why they could not bear the insult of Sri Krishna, and uh, he they display immediately. So in uh, Nectar of Devotion, they mention that one should not one should get angry when they see the Guru getting insulted by someone, and one should project. So that's why the Shakti of Krishna should, didn't compromise. The sweet exchange was happening between mother and the son. And uh, then when Sri Krishna opened his mouth uh, by the order of Mother Yashoda, she saw within uh, his mouth all non-moving and moving mountains and islands and oceans, earth uh, blowing water, he saw fire, stars, uh, planetary system, mind sense perception, three gunas, tala factor, uh, natural instinct, desire, different type of bodies, everything was uh, seen and she sees herself and Vrindavan Dham. She became doubtful now about her son's nature and this is where uh, the disturbance comes into picture from Vatsalya Rasa, uh, which is a parental love to uh, rasa of wonder, a rasa of fear. And uh, it was automatically displayed. Opulences wanted to serve Krishna. They didn't want it to disturb uh, that sweet exchange. And uh, this is why the Vrindavan, their love, uh, Vasis or Bridge Vasis love is so intense. They cannot just accept the reality. And that is what uh, uh, hap was happening to Mother Ishuda. She was just not able to believe what she was seeing. She says this Krishna goes house to house, steal butter, I have to put into sleep every day. I have to tell him bedtime stories. And uh, she, she began to start uh, asking herself, is it a dream? Uh, my eyes are still open. And uh, how can I see a dream? Maybe Indra was trying to put a spell on me. But how can he do that? I'm a simple lady. Why will he put a spell on me? Uh, it cannot be an illusion because I can see gopas, I can see gopis. And then again, she was thinking, uh, is this uh, uh, my Krishna is a god? No, 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 no. He cannot be. He cannot be uh, the god uh, because God belongs to everyone. But he's my. Uh, then my soul proprietor should be gone. He's mine. And exactly in material, uh, materialistic world, people wants exclusive uh, ownership of everything, and all this cosmic creation also uh, belongs to him. So she was thinking that that um, Krishna. Uh, he will be the sole property of Krishna. But now if it is a God, uh, she has to share Krishna with everyone. And uh, she was thinking that, uh, that I will not be able to do that. I feed him. I take care of him. I cannot accept that. Um, all gopis uh, tells me Krishna is God. How is this possible? And she started getting uh, scared, seeing her own shadow. And she, hides, uh, 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 she was starting to fear and confused. And she was saying that he's so dependent on me and he will die without me. I need Krishna. Krishna needs me. That's all. That is all the reality. There is no other reality than this. And Mother Yashoda start wondering. And she, she do not know what to do, what to think. So she, she just did one thing. She fold her hands and say, let me surrender to him. Because he is beyond the conception of my arguments, speculation, words. So now... Similar thing happen in our life as well. We we have we encounter many such situations when we cannot understand just by mere speculation because Krishna is beyond contemplation, speculation, meditation. So it's exactly like during winter when you know most of things are covered with fog. We we actually can't see things completely, but when it removes, we can see things, and that exactly happened when we get enlightened. So till that time, all we need to do is just pray, pray, and pray. So this is what exactly Mother Ishta did. She just offered obeisances to Sri Krishna Bhagwan, and uh, just wanted to not believe that uh, my Krishna is a Bhagwan. She still believed that he is my son. And uh, I just want to maintain uh, that Vatsalya Rasa. And she didn't want it to get that Rasa deserved that you are my child, I am your mother. There is no other uh, reality. So in this way, we are, uh, she was uh, the, the, her, her prem rasa or her pre love for Krishna was so strong, so thick that Maya also did not actually impact it. So we all also have to have that uh, faith or that love or that prem rasa with Bhagwan. 
but obviously what all we can do is we hope uh, that uh, we our connection or elevation with krishna gets higher and deeper every day and what we can do is like what mother yashoda did that we remember we, we make sure uh, that whatever uh, we are doing it for krishna whatever service we can uh, do with krishna by setting example and uh, uh, praying to see that uh, rasa between uh, mother yashoda uh, arjuna we have seen we have we have many example like this of devaki kunti they all have experience uh, r- such rasa and none of the aishwarya could touch them they still feel uh, that uh, krishna is our friend krishna is our my son krishna is my uh, my lover so they all so their consciousness gets extremely fixed at all the time uh and they always uh, feel the same rasa with the bhagwan so in today's session i just want to end it with a little story with a beautiful story of uh, sachidanand baba and uh, he uh, was he has actually spent all his life in uh, serving uh, the bhagwan and balram ji so he used to think that i have reached towards the end of my life and i have so many things happened uh, in my life uh, my health went bad my things got stolen uh, but krishna balram never came they never protect me and he decided that i want to go to parsana uh, maybe radha rani is so merciful and he was expecting some reciprocation so when he decided the whole nandgaon assembled and he say oh no no you please don't go don't leave this place who will give butter to them who will serve them so all the residents of uh, nandgaon started walking with him but he wasn't listening to anybody and they all followed him and then after a uh, some time he did, he he sees uh, he sees behind and then the the whole bridge uh, the uh, everyone uh, has disappeared except two boys and then we turn back he sees that on one hand is krishna and on other hand is balara and pleading him don't go uh, baba who will feed us who will give us prasad and then he just gets bewildered and oh bhagwan that is you that was the moment of the reciprocation he was waiting for whole life so the moral of the story is when longing reaches the boiling point uh, krishna will appear and that's why wonderfully he sees how krishna and he saw balaram he sat there for 24 hours and he left his body there so this is a very inspiring story of baba ji uh, when whole life there was no reciprocation he was just praying and praying and praying till the longing reaches as a uh, boiling uh, boiling point and therefore we must uh, hear to such uh, leelas uh, that demonstrate pure love past time of the resident of vrindavan showing pure love and finally offering the pranam to lord krishna and uh, shila prabhupad who took the vrindavan to the whole world and whole world is talking about vrindavan vrindavan he made temples all over the world so let us offer gratitude to shila prabhupad who has given us access and mercy uh, uh, to us and also to serve uh, him in supreme personality of godhead so uh, with this uh, mata ji i will end uh, my katha uh thank you so much shila prabhat ki jai shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shri vindavan dham ki jai okay krishna thank you so much for that you know it was very beautiful and uh now i'd just like to talk a little on uh um lok astami so a few uh, past times uh, actually two past times is when uh krishna was at the age of hurting cows basically he was hurting he came of age to have the cows at the cows but mother yashoda she told krishna how are you going to hurt the cows you don't have shoes on you don't have umbrella the thorns will get, are going to hurt you and the sun is going to scorch you so better carry an umbrella with you and Madhya should have said uh so Krishna said no ma no matter I won't wear shoes and I won't carry an umbrella if I have to carry an umbrella and wear shoes then you have to get shoes for all of my cows this uh you know um, Nandababa had uh 900,000 cows 
So, and you also have to get an umbrella for, and a servant for each one of them. So this is how dear the cows are to uh, Krishna. And when the cows heard this, they became uh, very compassionate and they felt that Krishna loves us so much, you know, that he is actually willing to uh, get shoes for all of us and an umbrella and a servant as well. So what we'll do is we'll go out and we'll stamp the ground so that there won't be any thorns to prick Krishna's feet. The sand will become soft and he can walk on that uh, soft sand. So it'll become like a cushion. So we see that um, the dham also serves Krishna in that it becomes like a cushion for Krishna to step on. Uh, and sometimes when Krishna is at Keter Kadamba and he wants to call the cows, so he gets up on the tree and he plays his flute and uh, he, play, he plays a special melody to attract, uh, to call the white cows to him. And then he changes his melody for the black cows. And then he changes his melody for the spotted cows, the brown cows, the yellow cows, the blue cows. So in this way, all the cows come to him. But sometimes uh, the other cows, they don't listen to him. They don't hear him. They do hear him, but they don't come. So what he does is he goes and he, uh, he asks uh, the cows, uh, my dear Shamali, why are you not coming to me? And they said, no, I, we didn't hear you. It's not that they didn't hear him. It's just that they wanted him to caress them, to uh, pat them, you know, and to have personal association with Krishna. So uh, we see like this, that Krishna, he loves the cows so much that he will do anything for the cows. And uh, uh, one time, now we'll go on to this, another pastime of how Radharani, uh, she want, Krishna wanted to meet Radharani and uh, so this also, this pastime also happened on the Gopastami day. And uh, so Krishna approached Subal Saka and he told Subal, please tr go and get Radharani for me. But uh, Subal said, how am I going to do this? You know, um, I can't go and get Radharani. You know how Jatila and Kutila are. So how can I go and approach Radharani? And then uh, Krishna told him, well, you have to please somehow do something and bring uh, Radharani to me. So uh, Subal thought of an idea and he came up with the idea of uh, taking a calf and going into, um, going to Yavit where uh, Radharani stayed with her in-laws. And he approached uh, the mother-in-law and he asked, he asked her, did you see my cows going anywhere? I'm looking for my, for my calf actually. Uh, I, can, I can't, cannot find my calf anyway. So have you seen my calf? And she says, nope, I haven't seen anything. There's nothing here, please go. And then he says, no, uh, I, maybe it ran into your house. Can I, I, I just need to go and search into your house. And he just said, go and make it fast and come out quickly. So he went in and as he went in, he went into Radharani's room and there he saw Radharani and he explained the plan to her. He told her that, you know, you need, Krishna wants to see you urgently. He's in so much of separation from you and he really wants to see you. So uh, why don't you go to him? Uh, then she said, but how can I go like this? He said, okay, what we can do is we can exchange clothes. So you wear my clothes, I will wear your clothes and in this way you can go. So Radharani put on uh, the dhoti and the kurta and, you know, she dressed up like Subal and she was so excited uh, to go and meet Krishna. She carried the calf in her hand to, uh, you know, to block herself and she, uh, she walked out. And in uh, Subal's voice, she says, thank you, mother. I found my calf and she went out. And uh, so Jatila was pleased and Radharani was also pleased. So... Uh, we see that uh, when she approached Krishna, so she asked uh, Krishna, uh, so uh, she told Krishna, I, you know, in Subal's voice, I'm so sorry, I could not 
uh, get Radharani to come. Maybe you should go and meet with Chandravali. And Krishna was so upset. He says, no, no, no. I cannot go and meet Chandravali. I want, I want Radharani right now. And, you know, so in this way, Radharani saw how, how much of love Krishna has for her. And she told, well, it's me. It's Radharani. And, uh, you know, they had their pastimes. And then uh, when it was time to go home, they went to um, the, they met, uh, she met the gopis and the gopis, uh, she told the gopis, why don't you go to my house and tell uh, Jatila that I want uh, to meet Radharani so we can go and do Surya Puja. So in this way, she told, the gopis told Jatila that they want to take Radharani to go and do Surya Puja. So um, Jatila did not object. She says, yes, for sure. And she went and called Radharani or she went and called Subal, who they thought, who she thought was Radharani and she let Radharani out. So in this way, uh, Subal came, got out of the house and he went and he met Ra uh, Radharani and you know, Krishna. They exchanged clothes and in that way, uh, Radharani went back home and Subal went to uh, Krishna. So, so we see that this pastimes are so beautiful and uh, it's basically um, uh, there to illustrate the mercy and uh, compassion of uh, Krishna to the cows and his love for Radharani and the cows on this day. So we don't have much time. What I'm going to do now is... Uh, I'm going to sing a song, uh, glorifying Vrindavan Dham. So uh, just give me a few minutes. Uh, time to get the song on. So, there we go. Jaya Radha, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan, Shri Govinda Gopi Nata, Madana Moha, Shama Kunda Radha Kunda, Shri Govinda,
जय जय कृष्ण कथा जरा जय राम घाता जय जय रोहिणी नंदा जय जय वृंदा बसी जा जा जय द्वीज पत्नी जय नग कन्या गसी सिया पो गोविंद चरा शीर साम डाला जाय जय राघ जय जय रासलीला जय जय ज्वाला रासा रासा कर जते प्रचार पाद पदिया स्मरा दीन कृष्ण दास कहे नम संकीर्ता हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे जय राज राज नत राज राज नत राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय श्री राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय श्री राधे हरे कृष्ण सो लेट्स रीड द ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ दिस ब्यूटीफुल सॉन्ग All glories to Radha and Krishna and the divine forest of Vrindavan. All glories to the three presiding deities of Vrindavan, Sri Govinda, Lokinath, and Madan Mohan. All glories to Shamakan, Radhika, Govardhan Hill, and the Yamuna River, Kalindi. All glories to the great forest known as Mahavan. 
where Krishna and Balaram displayed all their childhood pastimes. All glories to Keshigat, where Krishna killed the Keshi demon. All glories to Vamsivata tree. All, sorry, where Krishna attracted all the gopis to come, uh, to come by playing his flute. Sorry, let me read that again. Where Krishna attracted all the gopis to come by playing his flute. Glories to the twelve forests of Raja. All these places and the son of Nanda Maharaj, Sri Krishna performed all of his pastimes. All glories to Sri uh, Krishna's divine father and mother, Nanda and Yashoda. All glories to the cowherd boys headed by Sri Dham, the older brother of Srimati Radharani and Ananga Manjari. All glories to the cows and calves of Raja. All glories to Radharani's divine father and mother, Rishabhanu and the beautiful Kirtida. All glories to Purnamasi, the mother of Sandi Panimuni, grandmother of Madhamanga and Nandamukhi, and beloved disciple of Devarishi Narada. All glories to the young cowherd maidens of Raja. All glories, all glories to Gopeshwara Shiva, who resides in Vrindavan in order to protect the holy dham. All glories, all glories to Krishna's funny Brahmana friend, Mother Mangal. All glories to Ramagat, where Lord Balaram performed his Rasa dance. All glories to Lord Balaram, the son of Rahini. All glories, all glories to all the residents of Vrindavan. All glories to the wives of the, of the proud Vedic Brahmanas. All glories to the wives of the Kaliya serpents. Though pure devotion, through pure devotion, they all obtained the lotus feet of Lord Govinda. All glories to the place where the Rasa dance of Sri Krishna was performed. All glories to Radha and Shyam. All glories, all glories to divine Rasa dance, which is the most beautiful of all at Krishna's pastimes. All glories, all glories to the Mela of conjugal love which is the most excellent of all rasas, and it is propagated by the Raja, in Raja by Sri Krishna in the form of his the divine Parikya Bhav, Paramo love. Remembering your lotus feet, remembering the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda's consort, Sri Janava Devi, this very fallen and lowly servant of Krishna sings the Sankirtan of the holy name. So, uh, Hare Krishna. So I hope you all enjoyed that beautiful um, rendition of uh, the pastimes and of uh, the song and the pastimes of Gopasthami. Uh, thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Aziz. Anchikalpa through Pastra, the best in the Bhagavatcha, the Vidanam Bhavani Hill, Vaishnav Yipir, and Mona. Thank you so much to Paramatma Prabhu for giving us this opportunity to render the impact of the Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to Bhaktan Mina Mujra for the wonderful class. Thank you so much. Thank you. Krishna. Hi Krishna. Hi Krishna. Thank you very much. Hi Krishna Prabhu. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi Krishna.